Today is the anniversary of Culloden, the great and final Jacobite battle. Here at Culloden Moor, thousands were killed. Many more would go on to die in the days and weeks after as the British forces swept through the Highlands. But why is this battle so important? We'll just scratch the surface in this video with three things you need to know about the Jacobites. Images of Jacobites as fantouche lairds, as foreign-born princes or clan chiefs is misleading. For the most part, they were just normal folk from normal towns and villages across the north of Scotland. If you're male or female, young or old, in a town like this, then there's a great chance that you would have been out for Charlie. What drove these folk wasn't necessarily high ideals, but hard reality. The recent union with England had caused economic catastrophes all up and down the East Coast. Scotland's friend and key trading partner France had been cut off, becoming Britain's new enemy. Folk here turned to smuggling to make ends meet. So when Bonnie Prince Charlie said he'd make Scotland independent and restart that vital trade with France, folk here signed up in their hundreds. Just up the road there in Brecon, folk started producing pistols, muskets and swords to arm Abdi. What you start to see across the north of Scotland is a popularly supported armed uprising. For a brief moment in history, the wee folk from small towns and villages all across the north of Scotland were right at the heart of European dynastic struggles. And I think that's fascinating. All across the north of Scotland, the landscape is studded with stories about the Jacobites. Barely a glen exists without a cave where some Jacobites sheltered, or a village that contributed men to the cause. Loch Archaig is particularly enriched by Jacobite legacy. After the Battle of Culloden, all the unpaid wages of the soldiers was left in the Highlands. We know some of it was spent trying to ferment other risings, but much of it was buried. Jacobites were sent from the continent to collect the buried treasure, but they were arrested and betrayed by the banks of Loch Archaig. We know it's still out there because in the 1800s they found a great big bag of gold coins in the woods by the loch. In the 1990s and in 2016 major treasure searches took place, but they found nothing. That means that whatever's out there is still out there, just part of the Jacobite legacy in our landscape. Over 3,000 Jacobite soldiers survived Culloden and regathered at Ruthven, a massive military fortress just south of here. Vitally, their leader, Prince Charles, potential future King of Scotland, survived unhurt. It looked like Jacobitism, which had survived many a setback before, would live to fight again. Perhaps that's why the British were so ruthless in the aftermath. This graveyard in the middle of Inverness is where the Jacobite prisoners were brought to be executed after the battle. Many were shot here, some so injured they had to be lent against gravestones and killed there. This groove in this grave is where the executioner would lay his musket to ensure a nice clean kill. But why here? Why seven miles away from the battlefield? Well, just across the River Ness is a big mansion where the British soldiers were recuperating after the battle. They all lined the windows and watched as their Jacobite enemies were executed one by one. Obviously, I'm fascinated by all this stuff. The impact that Jacobitism had on our language and our culture on things like the depopulation of the Highlands. I genuinely believe that the more you understand Jacobitism, then the more you understand the country that we've become today. 